Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the fourth analysis of spare gearing. Here on the animation on the right or on the left you can see two spare gears in contact. So this one is rotating clockwise, therefore this one would be uh, counterclockwise. So the forces acting between the two gears are action and reactions. So when the pinion, which is the smaller gear, which happens to be the driver here as well, is rotating, is pushing the gear to along the pressure angle and this is the pressure angle this tells us how forces are acting uh, on the other gear and the pressure angle is a property of your gear so this force is going to have two components one would be the tangential component and then the other one would be the radial component uh, but this is the force that gear 2 is acting on gear 3 there would be a reaction force that gear 3 is acting on gear 2 and these two forces would be identical in magnitude and in the opposite direction and therefore their tangential component and radial component would be also the same but there are other forces acting on our gear as well let's look at the gear 2 here you can see that's the force that the shaft A is acting on gear 2 and here would be the torque that shaft A is acting on gear 2. For gear 3, it would be the same. Here we are dealing with shaft B. So that's the force that shaft B is acting on gear 3. And then here would be the torque that the shaft B is acting on gear 3. So in force analysis, we... Uh, decompose the components into the tangential component or the transmitted component and also the radial component. So the tangential component is the important one because it creates torque for us. The tangential component times the radius gives us the torque. Here we write tangential component WT. Here is the gear 3 acting in gear 2. The torque would be the radius times the tangential component and the power would be the torque times omega um, so here we replaced the torque omega and then the velocity at the point of contact would be pi dn over 12 uh, which is the same as r omega but usually in gearing instead of uh, reporting the rotational speed as uh, radian per second we report it as rpm and that's what this comes from so instead of omega we can write 2 pi n and n would be rpm so every revolution would be 2 pi so we have 2 pi r and instead of r i can write d over 2 these two cancels so i have pi dn if i report d in inches then i have to divide it by 12 so i get uh, my velocity foot per minute and power in gearing, if we have the power, we can find the velocity, we can find a velocity based on the RPM and the diameter. Remember, at the point of contact, the velocity is the same. So you can use the information for each gear, but you have to be consistent. If you want to use it for the pinion, you have to use the diameter of the pinion and the RPM of the pinion divided by 12. If you want to use the gear, that would be fine, but both the diameter and and the RPM should be for gear. And then we can find a tangential component. And that's in pound fourth. In SI unit, and just do the conversion, you have a constant value, 60,000, that doesn't have any significant uh, physical meaning. It's just a uh, constant comes into play when we do the conversion. And then similarly, we have the power in kilowatts, diameter in millimeter and, and in RPM. Let's look at this problem. Pinion 2 runs at 1750 RPM and transmit 2.5 kilowatt to idler gear 3. So gear 3 here is an idler. We talked about the definition of idler gear. That means that uh, the number of teeth for this gear uh, would not come into play in our velocity ratio so it really doesn't matter because gear 3 is both a driver for gear 4 and it's driven by gear 2. The teeth 
are cut at 20 degrees full depth system so we know the pressure angle would be 20 uh, we have the module we want to draw the free body diagram of gear 3 and show all the forces that act on gear 3 this idler gear so when this one is rotating when gear 2 is rotating here is pushing gear 3 in that direction and the angle is the pressure angle so if i want to draw the force that would be the force that gear 2 is acting on gear 3 and the angle would be the pressure angle and if this one counterclockwise gear 3 would be clockwise and gear 4 would be counterclockwise so here gear 4 is pushing the gear 4, four in the direction to uh, positive y and negative x so there would be a reaction in the opposite direction acting on gear 3 and i'm only interested in forces that are acting on gear 3 so that would be f4 3 f2 3 and f4 3 so here it would be a cleaner image of all the forces acting on gear 3 the forces that gear 2 is acting on gear 3 the tangential component and radial component, the tangential component would be simply the force times cosine of the pressure angle, which is here 20. And sine would be the radial component. And then here we have F43 tangential and component. And these are the reaction forces that the shaft is acting on our gear. As you can see, there is no reaction uh, moment or reaction torque of the shaft acting on the gear because the gear is an idler gear so it doesn't carry any torque and the uh, torque that is created by the tangential component here would be cancelled by the torque that is created by the tangential component here so here we want to find our diameters we have the module we have the number of teeth we can find the diameters and after finding the diameter, I can find the tangential component. Because I have the power, I have the RPM, and I found the diameter. I'm going to use the pinion diameter here. I can find the tangential component, which is the force that gear 2 is acting on gear 3. If I want to find the radial component, I have the tangential component. I can find the radial component. So if we go back to the previous, if I have the tangential component, the radial component would be simply F23 tangential component times the tangent of this angle. So I find the radial component and overall force would be the tangential component over cosine 20. But I need to find the other forces as well, the forces of gear 4 and gear 3. And the only thing I know is that gear 3 is an idler gear, which means that it has no torque. So if I write the torque equation summation of moment or summation of torque uh, along the center of the gear i will have the of f43 the tangential component times the radius of my gear would be the same as f the force of the gear 2 is acting on gear 3 times the radius this torque should be the same because both of them are acting on the same gear the same radius this would cancel out and that tells me that the tangential component of gear 4 acting on gear 3 would be the same as gear 2 acting on gear 3 so it would be the same value now therefore the radial component would be the same because the pressure angle is the same and the overall and now that i have the two forces i can write summation of forces in x equals zero therefore i find the reaction force of the shaft on gear 3 and summation of forces in y i can find the unknown reaction and uh, the resultant i can use the pythagorean theorem to find the resultant uh, reaction force of the shaft on the gearing so i found all the forces based on finding this tangential component first and this one based on was horsepower and the rpm or then we change it to the velocity so we have the power we have the rpm we found one tangential component based on the fact that it's an idler gear we found the other tangential component and once we find one component we can find the other component based on this pressure angle and once everything was found uh, 
and determine we used equilibrium equation summation of forces in x and y equals zero to find uh, the reaction forces.